So welcome to our second uh, lesson. In this lesson we will introduce some mathematical operators, the big O, big omega, and big theta, that allow us to argue about the asymptotic growth of the running time of algorithms. We will use these operators to compare different algorithms and ultimately to decide which algorithms are computationally tractable or not. Again, some of the slides come from the textbook and I would like you to study sections 2.1 uh, and 2.2 for this lesson. In the previous class we talked about various algorithms and we uh, tried to derive their running time. However, we cannot always write such an expression, such a tight expression, because the algorithm may include if statements, which means that how many operations the algorithm will execute really depend on, on the particular input. Additionally, not every operation has the same latency. As you probably know, doing a floating point division takes much, much longer than just a comparison between integer variables. So instead of trying to write such detailed expressions for the running time, we instead focus on three things. We focus on the worst case possible input, right? So think about binary search. Instead of assuming that you will be lucky and that you will find what you are looking for with the very first comparison, we would assume that what you are looking for is not in the given array, and that would be the worst case input for the binary search um, algorithm. We also care about what happens asymptotically as the size of the input n increases. To see why, suppose that I give you another algorithm b, if this is a, um, that has a running time of n cubed plus 1. This algorithm is faster than a for small inputs, but really we don't care about small inputs we care about what happens uh, as the input size becomes longer and longer. And from that point of view, algorithm B would be slower than algorithm A. The third um, focus is on the functional type of the running time rather than the specific expression. For instance, if I give you the third algorithm in which the running time is 4n cubed plus 4, you would say that algorithm C is four times slower than algorithm B, and that's of course correct. But does it really matter? In both algorithms, the running time increases with the cube of the size n. This is very different than an algorithm in which the running time increases as n, a linear time algorithm, or a running time that increases as let's say 4 to the nth power. So typically we care only about the type of the functional growth rather than the exact expression of the running time. So the first mathematical operator we will define is the big O operator which is used when we want to have an upper bound for the running time of an algorithm. So suppose that the running time of an algorithm is given by the function t of n. We say that t of n is big O of another function f of n. This, this function will be our, our upper bound. If there is a positive constant c such that the running time of our algorithm is upper bounded by c times the function f of n. For any value of n that is larger than a constant n0. Example, if t of n is, let's say, 4n squared plus 1, we can write that this function is big O of n squared. For instance, we could pick c equal to 5 and n0 equal to 1. In that case, we can say that t of n, which is 4n squared plus 1, is lower or equal than 5n squared, which is for any n that is greater or equal than n0, which is 1. 
By the way, the notation bigO reads order of. So you would say that this function t of n is order of n squared. Another mathematical operator is the big omega, uh, which is used when we want a lower bound for the running time of an algorithm. So the big O notation is used for an upper bound, the big omega is used for a lower bound. The definition is very similar to the big O, but critical inequality here is reversed. So we say that the running time is big omega of a function f of n. If again there exists a positive constant c, such that the running time has a lower bound c times f of n for any value of n which is greater or equal than a non-negative constant n0. Let me give you an example. Suppose that the running time of our algorithm is n times log base 2n. In that case you can say that the running time is big omega of n. I choose c equal to 1 and n0 equal to 2. So the third operator we will define is the big theta which is used to have a tight bound for um, the running time of an algorithm. An upper bound and a lower bound at the same time. So the definition is that t of n, the running time t of n, is big theta of some function f of n when t of n is both big O f of n and big omega f of n. If t of n is, let's say, 4n squared plus 1, of course this is both big O n squared and big omega n squared. This means that t of n is also big theta of n squared. Now, our theorem is that if I have two um, running time functions, fn and gn, and I take the ratio, if this ratio has a limit as n tends to infinity, so if this uh, limit exists and it's a positive constant c, then one of the two functions is big theta of the other. Right? So instead of using the definition that we saw here to examine if the two functions are related with the big theta notation, we can simply take the ratio and examine if that ratio actually exists. Just based on the definition of the limit, given that this ratio gradually becomes closer and closer to this constant c, it means that fn over gn cannot stay larger than 2 times c forever, right? After a certain value of uh, n, it will become less than 2 times c when n is greater than some and zero. Okay? From this inequality we conclude that f of n will be smaller than 2c times g of n as long as n is greater or equal than n0, which means that f of n is big O of g of n from our definition. Similarly, Given that this ratio converges to c, it cannot stay lower than half of c forever. So sooner or later it will be that this ratio is greater than c over 2 as long as n is greater or equal than some potentially different n0 prime. And so from this inequality we conclude that f of n will be greater than c over 2 times g of n as long as n is greater than n0 prime which means that f of n will be big omega of g of n 
So what we proved here is that f of n will be both big O and big omega of g of n. And so from the definition, f of n will be big theta of g of n.